Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for MCrater. Today what we're going to be doing is showing you a mob repellent block. Our unit, I've called it that because it basically pushes the entity in a direction that the block is facing. So uh, it's powered so it requires fuels. As you can see I have a whole bunch of coal in my inventory so we'll be powering some of this up. And if we uh, just carve out a section like this we can place down some blocks like so and now this will work in a line or any direction this will literally just uh, push the mob to the direction that the uh, arrows are facing so the next thing that we need to do is actually fuel up the, the block and as you can see it starts increasing in numbers that's good and we'll do that for every one of these blocks so when we finish doing that, we can throw an entity in the middle of it. Or if an entity happens to walk on top of it, it will start powering itself. So sadly, there isn't any natural mobs around here to test that on, but we can grab any type of mob that we want. Uh, we could do something like, uh, where is it? Pillager, pillager, there we go. And we'll just stick the pillager right on here. And as you can see, it kind of pushed it from here to here and then into the center. So that's basically how it works. Um, any direction the arrow is facing, it will push the entity in that direction. So if, uh, it's only for hostile mobs. We can actually walk on it just fine. But uh, any monsters or hostile mobs, they will be literally stuck on the other side of the block. So let's hop into MCrater and I'll show you how it all works. So you're going to need a couple resources. You're going to need two block textures if you want to go the same route of uh, the block that I ended up going with. For mob elements, I have one GUI, uh, one block, and two procedures. So we'll cover the GUI first and I'll show you how to set that all up. So I have for elements, uh, only three elements for the GUI editor itself. I have a title for the GUI inventory. I then have a slot uh, for the fuel. And I then have the uh, MPT tag being displayed up here for the power. And you want to make sure that you enable the GUI with slots and uh, any other settings are pretty much fine. Now for the um, two text based things, I have set offset the uh, snapped grid to 28 and that's what I generally use for text is uh, offset by uh, Y28 and for the slot I did uh, offset by uh, 30, 33. So those are the two numbers that are basically set up that. Uh, there is no procedures or anything in here, it's just a simple GUI. Now for uh, the actual tag for the fuel, uh, if you wanted to add a any MBT tag that is for a block or entity or something like that, you would want to go to create a regular text label and then you want to click the drop down box icon and you want to scroll down. Now there's two different variants. There's entity here, and then there is BNBT, and the BNBT is for the one for the blocks. Uh, ENBT is for the entities. And there's different types. Um, there is, let's see if I can read that. There is uh, text, logic, integer which is solid numbers and numbers which is uh, also includes the point form so what I've gone with is just a simple in integer now before you create the actual title uh, you want to go one arrow back and then you want to delete delete everything that says uh, tag name and then you want to put your MBT block uh, tag name in here so in my case I, I have um, device fuel and then now that that's also case sensitive so you want to make sure that it's exactly the same way and then you can change the color and all that and just click OK and then you can drop it down and it will display your MBT 
fuel. So that's pretty cool. Um, now I'm going to actually have to delete both of them by accident. I'll just not save. So that's basically the GUI itself. The other thing that we have done is create the block. So with the block, I have the arrow facing upwards. Now that generally seems to work just fine. And then the regular textures. Now these textures are gonna be included in the workspace itself. I'll make sure to upload this one because it's kind of an advanced tutorial. And uh, then the only other thing that I've done is set the rotation to southwest, northeast. And that's all for this particular page. Uh, you can set any of these properties up the way you want. And moving on. Now the update tick, this is going to affect uh, how much the fuel actually goes through. So you might want to set this to a long, higher number if you want to go, uh, the fuel to not go through as fast. Uh, and any of these other properties are basically anything you can change. Uh, you will need MBT uh, enable the inventory for the tile block, so make sure this is checked. You want to select your GUI, and then you want to make sure you'll be able to open it, so check that box. And if you only have one fuel slot, then set this to 1. Uh, if you have more slots than that, then you want to set uh, the number according to how many slots you have. And uh, this is how many, basically, um, how many items can basically be stacked in that particular slot. So this is 64. And you can leave these enabled or disable them. Either way, it's okay. But I suggest keeping this one uh, enabled because then it will drop the fuel if it's broken. And uh, lastly, for your fuel slot, just make sure that uh, nothing can be pulling out the uh, actual fuel because that would be probably bad. So you want to allow it to go in, but you don't want it to be taken out. So just set the slot slot number to, to the uh, cording slot that you want to disable for items being taken out of. Uh, moving on, there is no fuel or um, fluid energy. Triggers, we have two triggers. Um, we have a update tick, which uh, handles the uh, fuel usage and the fuel gaining and then we have the when entity walks on block which basically covers the procedure to basically move the entity so we'll start with the update tick first because that's actually plays a very important role in figuring the rest of it out so uh, we'll go here and under the update tick there is two different if statements that are going on. The first one up here is basically, uh, right here is basically testing if the there's fuel items in the slot. And if so, then it's gonna remove the slot and then it's going to add um, 500 fuel points to the uh, MBT variable. So to make that, what we need to do is grab an if statement and then we're gonna plop that down here. We're also gonna need a logic under logic and create a and statement so we can grab a light blue operator, this one right here. And then we can click on the equal sign and then go and, and then we're going to uh, external outputs. So it's like this. And then we need to go and grab another logic and grab this one right here, the red operator and then we're going to need to go back to logic and grab a dark blue operator. Now for the dark blue operator, you want to set that to equal to or greater than. Now that symbol is basically the greater than sign with the underscore. So that one right there. And then what you want is to go to math, grab a number and plop that down in here and you want to set this to one. And then what you want to do is go to math com uh, Minecraft components, grab a Minecraft block for testing for the item and then you want to set this to whatever fuel item you want so in my case I have it set to coal and then what we need to do is go to block procedures and then grab our two components right here this one uh, get copy of item from slot 0 and then the inventory so this one we're going to need for the top one right here and then if we go back to block, we're going to need the one directly below it, getting the number. 
So when you have these two blocks uh, set up, uh, then you can move on to removing the item. So let's go back to block. Uh, we'll scroll down a little bit and there should be remove items from slot of block. And then if it has an inventory, so you want to remove that. And by default, this should work fine for how it's set up. Um, you can remove more if you want to, but it might require a little bit uh, tweaking for getting it just right. In this case, if you're going to increase how many items that are removed, you want to also increase this number here. So these two would be like that. Um, now moving on, uh, we need to set the MVT variable. So let's uh, go back to block. We'll scroll down a little bit and then there is a set MBT number tag and then we're going to drop that right here. I'm going to give it a name. In my case, I called it device fuel. And then what we want to do is grab a math operator and we're going to drop that down right here. We're going to move that number over to this section right here. I'm going to set this to 500. Now this is how many points it will gain per item. So if it's uh, you can lower this number, you can make it higher, you can do whatever you want with it. It's just uh, how many points the one single item or how many items that you basically test for in this area will basically uh, power add to the variable number for fuel. So we're going to drop that right in here and then we need to actually get the variable. So we'll go back to block and then we're going to get MBT number tag, and then we're going to drop that right in here. And then we're actually going to just hit control, like select this, hit control C, and then control V to paste our. So, so that's the first part all done. Uh, there's another part right down here. Now this is this part right here uh, covers the removing of fuel. Now if there's anything higher than equal to or greater than uh, one fuel point in the actual block, then it's going to uh, set the uh, device fuel to negative one. So it's gonna subtract one point from the actual fuel cost. So to make that, uh, what we need to do is grab another if statement. So we'll go back to flow control, grab an if statement. And then what we need to do is go back to um, logic, grab a dark blue operator, and then we're going to set this equal to or greater than, and then we're going to need a number, so we'll go down to math, we'll drop this in, and then we'll set this to one, and then what we need to do is go to block procedures, and then what we need to do is get MBT tag, and then you can copy with uh, control C, and control V to paste the tag in. And then we're basically testing if the device fuel is equal to or greater than one. So the next thing that we need to do is basically just clone this part right here. And we're going to drop that right here. So to clone it, you can just uh, right click on the actual block and then you can duplicate it and then it'll copy everything over. So we're instead of adding it, what we need to do is subtract it. So we're gonna set the number to one and we're going to click on the math operator uh, box right there for the plus sign and then we're going to set it to negative. So subtract one and then that's all there is to this part here. So moving on to the when entity walks on block, if we open this up, uh, it's not too, too complicated. It's just a few different rotations and we're deciding to move the entity the direction. Uh, what's going on is we're testing if the block has actual fuel, if it's equal to or greater than one. If it has fuel, then what we're doing is we're going to test for the type of entity. In my case, I've select monster and uh, test if it's true. Uh, followed by basically getting the block direction, north, south, west, or east. And then I have set the coordinates to push the entity in that direction. Uh, north is actually negative one in Minecraft. You would think it would be a positive one, but it isn't. So it's negative one. South is positive one on Z coordinates. Uh, so these two are both Z coordinates. And west and east are both X coordinates. Uh, west is negative one and east is positive one. 
So that's pretty straight across the board for any coordinate based things when you're working with uh, four directions. Um, now, of course, down is obviously negative and up is obviously positive. But um, with that being said, let's create this and I'll show you how to start. First thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a to go to flow control, grab an if statement. Then you're going to need to go to logic, grab a dark blue operator. And you're going to set this to equal to or greater than. And then we're going to need a math number. And we're going to drag this and we're going to set that to one. Next thing that we need to do is go to block procedures, scroll down until we uh, get MBT tag, uh, the dark blue operator. And then we want to set this as our device fuel, the same thing that we're using for the fuel tag in the other procedure. So device and then fuel. And then what we need to do is create another if statement. And we're going to plop this down right here. We're going to need to go back to logic, grab a light blue operator. And we're going to need to go back to logic again and grab a true statement. Uh, the equal sign needs to be for this one. And then what we need to do is go to entity. And somewhere at the bottom of all this um, procedure blocks, you're going to find one that says is event slash target entity subtype of and then entity ageable. So we want to grab that and drag that onto here. And then what we want to do is scroll down until we see monster, which is way at the bottom here. Um, it's not really alphabetical order, but uh, you want to select the monster one. And then we need to create a, another if statement. So we'll go back to flow control. And then we're going to grab the third type of if statement. We're going to drop that down here. We're going to click the gear icon. And then we're going to drag and drop two more if else statements onto the bottom of it. Now, after we've done that, we need to go back to logic, grab a orange operator. And then what we need to do is go to block. And then we need to go down to get block at uh, get block direction and drop that down right here. And then what we're going to do is grab a go to Minecraft components and then grab a direction variable or direction block. So we need to set the first one to north and then we're going to set the next one to south and then we're going to set the next one to east or pardon me west and the next one to east. So now that we got all that set up we need to actually use the movement vector to basically push the entity in the direction that we want to or push the direction that the entity is actually facing. So to do that, we need to go to entity procedures and scroll down until you find a uh, movement vector, which should be somewhere around here. And it says set event slash target entity movement vector to and then VX and then a number VY, a number and then VZ. So this is act the V actually stands for velocity and uh, the Y, Z, and X is obviously the coordinates. So we're going to drag that and then we're going to plop that down here. We're going to duplicate this uh, all four times. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our coordinates for the actual variables. So we can use the subtract sign as long as there's a number. So I have basically set north to negative one and you want to set uh, south to positive one for both z coordinates. Moving on to west, you want to set this to negative one. And to east, you want to set this to positive one. And that's all there is to that particular block. So that's all done. So again, I will make sure to include the workspace in the uh, on my in the description and it'll go directly to the project page for this project. Uh, all the files for the textures, uh, procedures, and workspace, as well as any models that generally that I have sometimes in the uh, workspaces are al always included in the actual uh, workspace uh, files and stuff like that. So you're more than welcome to download that from Google Drive uh, from my project page. So with that being said, if you have any suggestions on what I should do, 
uh, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will uh, definitely try to figure those, some of those out when I have some time. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.